It's you, it's me, it's YDT, Season 3, Episode 183 of a show which pulls back the curtain, takes down walls brick by brick, and exposes the true hearts of those caring for those you love most, and the exposing of my heart is this, I'm exhausted, I'm very tired. Tomorrow, we hop on a plane, and then we get to LA, we have meeting after meeting after meeting, we have a late dinner on Friday night, then we take the red eye at 11.50 to get back, because I need to get back. Saturday morning for my son's birthday. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I don't care if hell freezes over. I will buy ice skates. Speaking of, that's what he wants for his birthday. I'm excited for my trip. I'm really grateful. The single last time is number 13 at radio. It was the biggest moving song last week. And this week we're excited for a similar outcome press is pushing we have a lot of really good stuff happening i was on the radio this morning and i'm just tired <laughs> i'm so tired went live on tiktok the other night it was really awesome be sure to click all the links in the description in the show notes because i want you to follow me on all of them because we're always doing something fun but we gave away a bunch of merch people if you buy merch right now all of you on this podcast wherever it is you're listening you can actually buy it right now uh, get you some swag and you'll be entered to win a basket a tisket a tasket of all the merch all the merch yeah head over to the store right this second it's linked in the show notes get you a shirt get you a mug holy shirts and pants yeah you know we did a really cool video live on youtube last night go live monday through thursday anyway and on this we were talking about all the things that can be done to your body after you die and we being me and then us on the youtube at the target at the walmart we talked about all these different things it's amazing what can happen to you after you die it's legal i mean not necessarily ethical but legal nonetheless and i thought hmm I think that'll do for a really interesting episode. So I want to share with you from the live, all the things that you could do with your body after your death. Hmm. Welcome to my rabbit hole. That doesn't sound good. I have been intentionally working to be appreciative and grateful for everything this is what i asked for like you asked for it it's just this is what you wanted be careful what you wish for is the old saying i hope you enjoy this episode of all the things that could be done to your body after your death like you know just listen because it has something to do with bath and body works what what did I mention I'm going to the magic castle? Not Disney, but like the magicians. I did. I didn't? Oh, okay. Well, all right. Shut up, Nathan. Enjoy this episode. Have your mind blown. Look at me being all tech savvy. We're talking on this Monday. Happy Monday. Is it happy? It's been a shit show for me. Things people can do to your body. Things that can be done to your body after you die. Let's jump right in. I have to read this name because I have to say it over and over. Adiposir. Adiposir. There's a way that you just copy the name of or word paste it, and then write pronunciation. And then sometimes it lets you down, but adiposir formation, it is corpse wax. Now, you know, in Mexico City, for instance, they have 30,000 deaths a year. And so for seven years, you buy a plot, the loved one is buried there. And then after the seventh year, they dig whatever is left of your loved one up. And then you can retrieve them, which that gets me into the next rabbit hole because you can actually sell bones. 
the cemetery people do this sometimes in Mexico City and then they make some money. Nonetheless, it's on traffic that, yeah, it's not good. Just know before you go, meaning if you're gonna donate your body. But that's a whole other video. We're talking about things that can happen to your body that you could have done to your body after you die. And this is adipose sear formation. So it's corpse wax, a dead body's wax. It's very interesting how it forms. It doesn't always form. It forms under certain conditions during decomp, decomposition. And it encases the body in the shell and it complicates the grave recycling for that's why i brought up if you're recycling a grave like mexico city for instance every seven years if you have adipose sear formation you're like oh my gosh it doesn't break down it's interesting because this phenomenon aids though forensic scientists and archaeologists but presents challenges for the grave and the maintenance of i have never seen adipose sear formation i've seen pictures of but it's amazing the human body and how not everyone, because we're all so uniquely different, doesn't have that form formation. Like you can actually, oof, where you self implode. Like you can catch on fire. I think it's it's been documented. I, it's why is it? I can't think of the word. Like you self, oof. Let me know what am, what am I saying? I don't know. And we're doing something new with these lives, which is really cool is I have, because I want to make sure I get to the answers, like, uh, cause I don't pay attention to it when it's scrolling in real time. Then we have moderators that are typing, which is good. Thanks to Sandy and Daniel and Manuel. And anyway, what's it called? Human combustion, human combustion, <laughs> adipose formation. So in other words, you turn into a candle, like a bath and body works. What are wonder what it smells like. And if you're just joining, I'm Nathan. I spent 13 years in the funeral profession. And now I write songs based upon and are inspired by my works. And you're here because you stumbled upon crime documentaries or crime podcasts or paranormal, or you love my music, which I'm grateful for. My number 13 single, yep, last time is now number 13 at Radio 22 at Billboard. So it's up two spots. Be sure to subscribe here. Be sure to click the bell to be notified when I release content like Adipose Seer. Adipose Seer, boy. You know, it's like Attaboy. Adipose Seer. What about historical desecration? So if you've watched my shorts on YouTube, like YouTube shorts, if you washed my shorts is what it sounded like. The French Revolution, it saw many... Uh, royal tombs desecrated and henry the fourth's remarkably preserved body became this public spectacle and the event it showcased curiosity and major disrespect highlighting the complex relationship societies have with deceased persons so they were desecrating all these bodies during the French Revolution. They were pulling these bodies out of tombs and they were making sure that it was a really sad time. Well, when they came to Henry the Fourth's body and it was so preserved, they're like, wow, they even there are stories of them cutting off his beard and and mocking and mimicking by putting it on one of the soldiers doing this. And I I can't imagine, you know, like desecrating. A loved one no matter how far how much time has passed you know to think that because we're all worthy to be celebrated but also our bodies are temples really whether you believe or whatever you believe this body houses you and that's something to be honorable of for you know like respecting of one's body in life and in death i can't imagine i I wouldn't even want to fathom, my brain can't, but the repercussions of the desecration of a body. It's like it's like hurting a baby or a child, you know, such a helpless individual. Obviously, they're alive and anyway, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Like, obviously, I'm not, it's not a, what are your thoughts on this act? Not, could you do it? Obviously not. That. There ain't nobody got time for that. This is a question that's been asked. It's, it, 
it's kind of been a, you know, amongst close friends, they'll joke about, you know, people who are, because there are nut jobs and creeps that work in a morgue or that are attracted to deceased persons, but they were even worried about it in, in Egypt. So necrophilia concerns, ancient Egyptians, they harbored fears of it. And the upper classes specifically, like they were so fearful of it and it led to delays in handing over bodies to embalmers to even prepare the loved one. The funeral profession has seen, unfortunately, instances of this violation, which raises ethical and legal questions and concerns. There are, unfortunately, cases where this has happened and has been done. Again, this goes back to desecration of a of a of a body i mean like what an i don't even know what to say to it i don't even it, it it's almost like it doesn't even it doesn't even warrant any more of my time here on on this channel because it's such a disgusting thing and anyone who is who is low enough to be caught or or to do such an act deserves like the the most horrible judgment of any kind but I'm grateful that I'm not judge and jury, right? Uh, like, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That is why it's important to know who's caring for your loved ones at all times and to educate people and to to make sure that you realize just how lovely you are and your family and your loved ones and they deserve to be honored and held into the highest regard and and reverence always so I, I think if i saw someone hurt a child or if i knew that such disrespect as this was carried out in any way and i was in direct contact with someone i would i there would be physical harm i would i would have physical harm what I'm saying is I'm trying to make sure that the algorithm here does ban me. It would not, it would be hell to pay. I, I would, I would lose it. It's awful. What would you do? Like, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think all of your all's responses would be the same too. Just, uh, anyway, that's crazy. But the ancient Egyptians were scared too. So they would delay giving their loved ones up. Wow. I've talked about this before, the corpse exhibitions, and this is going back a couple of days ago. I went down this rabbit hole of body donation and you, you know, these people and these families, they donate their bodies to science. Science is such a loose term, however. Now I know there are a lot of organizations and universities and colleges and other uh, tissue banks, if you will, that do a very reputable, honorable job. And I think body donation is such a selfless act and gift because there are there are advancements in medicine that happen because of there are incredible things that happen for the betterment of society and for the future of our health and healthcare system. And I, I do know that the science aspect is so loose. Like for instance, if you're going to get Botox done, the people who learn Botox and how to administer it properly, they work on cadavers and literally, uh, the head of a of a body donor. Now is that science? You know, uh, those that that's one of the, that's one of your. That's like a, a bad example because there's a lot of like the family in Arizona. This family is so transparent and it was very beautiful. So people found me. You all, a lot of you all, found me because of a video that went viral. The viral video was me giving a tour of a care center, the the prep room, the embalming facility where we tend to and care for the deceased that come into the care of the funeral home. They're embalmed and prepared for visitation for the public. There's such a, a holiness to that room. There's such a reverence to that space. And why we do it, I wanted to show the seniors in high school in this death and dying class. And that resonated with so many people. And this family in Arizona, they too do this. They open their homes and their space up, the facility, to say, for those of you who are, are considering body donation, we're going to show you the heart of what we do, why we do it, how we do it, things like that. You know, they answer the why first. And 
they show them the entire operation. They show them the place where it's a facility that looks kind of like the embalming area. And that's where they would harvest the, let's say, a, a leg or an, an arm. And you can't really talk about this without it sounding almost a little morbid. But there's such passion behind it because they only work with hospitals or clinics that that are literally medically focused. And every part that they harvest, they have a special code, a special, a special serial number. And then they wrap so delicately, but also within this wrapping of and housing of, it has each piece has a note of which stating something, I'm paraphrasing, like this is someone's loved one, uh, honor and respect them, handle with extreme care and reverence kind of thing. So every time a loved one's body part is moving throughout this process, they're being honored. So the the family are showing the the housing before they go to their clinic or the hospital, the the actual portion of the body. Um, and they open the cooler to show, obviously it's all very reverent. You don't just have exposed limbs. It's 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 a very meticulous and very clean, but I think it's good for these people to see what's happening. You know, okay, if I choose to do this, then I know that this family is going to see to it that it's for the advancement of actual medicine. The other side of the coin is, you know, the reason I get into that is because of the corpse exhibitions. So exhibits, when I say corpse, it's literally deceased persons, museums worldwide. They actually display uh, preserved human bodies and it sparked debates about the dignity of and ethics of such exhibitions. Like, I think I said expeditions. Exhibitions. Did I say ex- expeditions? Exhibitions. So, if you donated your body to science, I just got four more followers on Instagram. Thank you, whoever that was. I have a counter over there. If you donated your body to science and your body ended up on display, like your nervous system. Have you ever seen those documentaries where it's that's what they're talking about, like the body exhibitions? Would that be comfortable for you, for your family? Those are the questions that you need to ask and make sure that the facility in which someone is connecting with is a reputable one. But uh, despite this educational intent, concerns about the origins of these bodies and the impact on viewers, especially these kids, I mean, because kids can go through. Could you imagine being a kid? I mean... I would have been mortified. Actually, I'd probably been kind of weirded, like weirdly intrigued. <laughs> like, well, that's neat. But it, because it is. But again, these families, do they know that that's what their loved one's body is going to be used for? They had a, they had a public dissection. I like a Ramada. I kept saying Ramada Inn, but like, you know, how you have a conference room or, or an area in a hotel and, and you can rent the space. This company just had like a body exposed and you paid a thousand dollars and watched uh very weird if you've made it this far and you haven't yet subscribe click the bell to be notified we're diving into crazy things that can happen to your body after you die it's wild this one's this is really we talked about this on a tiktok live last night what do i think about death photography and death photography is on the comeback and it might sound really weird and i'll share a couple of stories one of which is a personal one but it started you know whenever cameras were first you know that you see in the movies and then the the bull blows but oftentimes i don't know if you know this when women went to get their wedding dresses made and when they made them they also prepared for their funeral attire because it was expected that if you wed then you would bear a child and give birth but obviously because it was such a dangerous thing childbirth they knew that they quite possibly could die which is admirable that they were willing to to possibly die it's it's a beautiful thing really women are you are amazing and i said that in the live but whenever death occurred they would photograph the deceased person and oftentimes back then the coffins that's what they were called then they were upright so they would lean the body into almost in a standing formation 
And um, of course, they were also reposing where they would lie, but you would see this and they would take photographs and the family would stand together, especially when babies died. A lot of babies died during childbirth. I mean, it was a very dangerous thing. And they would stand all the kids, all the family with the deceased loved one. It was uh, to capture this moment on this side of life. And I remember being in the profession and seeing countless times in the chapel, visitation room, people pull out their phones and take photos. And if they weren't family, obviously they'd be like, hey, no photos. But I would think that's odd. I wouldn't necessarily voice it. I would keep it to myself. But I remember my grandmother, she died of cancer, you know, and, and illness, it, it ravages our body as unfortunately sometimes tragedy can too and the purpose of of an embalming is a preservation yes but also to try to give the family the opportunity to have a comfortable viewing experience and to make them look the way they remembered before the illness or before the tragedy took them and i remember catching myself before i closed grandmother's casket with my phone out taking a picture because she looked so beautiful and i was like hmm I understood it. I get it. It's on the comeback. Death photography, especially with children, babies, and hospitals. Hospitals oftentimes, actually pretty much all the hospitals I know, they take photographs of a, of a baby that passes away. And it's a beautiful gift. Sounds odd to us because we're not experiencing such a tragic thing. But for the families that have to forever mourn and carry that, they're able to reflect back on a, on a photograph. Nonetheless, it is coming back. There are a lot of really beautiful funeral photos. Sounds odd to even say, but there really are. And people love to see them. We love to see them. There's this intrigue about it, right? And this practice reflected society's intimate acquaintance with death and the desire to preserve the memory of the departed. It There's such a it's not even a stigma anymore, I don't think. I think COVID, post-COVID, you all so badly want to have these conversations. And, and I think it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that's why we're together. But I I think it's, we realize the, I think we realize this acquaintance, this intimacy that we have with death. And I think the death photographs, I don't know. I see it now more than ever, people posing next to their loved ones. I, I had people ask me, can you take a picture of us talking about their family with their loved one. It's beautiful. Posthumous parenthood. This one got a lot. This one, this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You go ahead. If you know where I'm going with this, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the posthumous parenthood. Okay. This is real, by the way. Technological advancements allow for the possibility of conceiving children with the reproductive material of the deceased, 48 hours, by the way, after death, the male. This practice opens up a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas, for sure, and questions about consent and impl implications for the resulting children. You're 25 years old. You grew up with a single mother. You never knew anything about your dad. You just know that he died. Well, actually, you do the math, and you're like, hmm. Oh, he, you were conceived after dad died. There are two very prominent cases, one of which is uh, a mom lost her son, which is so tragic and sad. She so badly wanted a grandchild that she had her son's sperm taken from him and has bukus of volunteers. Now, I don't know what the outcome was. Had bukus of females willing to carry the child. What? in the world. The second in instance is a woman, whose husband died in a in a car crash and she, this is this is a this went to court because the family of the 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 man didn't want this but the wife conceived a child with him posthumously. Again, 48 hours it, you have that window. And I have had people inquire about it on my side of the profession to which I wouldn't even know where to begin. 
I wouldn't know how I, I said that. I don't even remember how I responded. I just know that I was like, we've never done that. And that was kind of the end of it. And then in the live last night, again about this, someone said that they were inquiring about it too. Like they wanted it to happen. It's not illegal. I mean, obviously, the manner in which you obtain the specimen would have to be done. I, anyway, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think, does that make you feel weird just as much as it makes me feel weird? I mean... Because then is that a, a level of necrophilia? I don't know. I'm not saying it is. I'm not insinuating or implying. I'm I'm just asking generally an open-ended question. Is that? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, you're welcome. Exploding coffins. It's a real thing. Someone told me. I love when people. <coughs> it tickled my throat. I love when people argue with me because Keanu Reeves had a recent quote and I loved it. He's like, you know, I'm at the place in my life where two plus two, someone could say equals five. And I'll say, okay, like this man, I was talking about cremation casket. He's like, liars, <laughs> liar. You're lying. That's false. It's fake. You don't cremate a casket ever. Okay. Exploding coffins. Never heard of it. It's not true. It, no, it really is true. It, absolutely can happen but the way in which i try to explain it in the video and i'm going to say it again it's not like a a bomb in a, a war movie it's real that the buildup of gases during decomposition it leads to the it's a called a casket coffin casket exploding especially in sealed environments like mausoleums a wood casket for instance in a sealed environment like a mausoleum you have the exterior heat of the summer and spring and then the cool, and then the heat, and the cool, and then the, it's kind of like your tires in the winter, they deflate, and then the heat inflate. Same thing. This phenomenon presents both a practical problem for burial practices, like, like the turning into wax, and a dramatic illustration of the physical aspects of decomposition. I have personally experienced an exploding casket. Not in real time, but the aftermath of it's not, like I said, it, it's not like the body, you know, respectfully speaking, is in pieces. It is the pressure from the gases that are expelling from the orifices of a loved one's body. Naturally, decomposition, it builds up in the casket. In the casket, you know, wood caskets, metal caskets, they're not going to be exploding. The, the wood will separate if there are seams seams and and will absolutely come apart we've had to take a loved one out of their mausoleum space and casket to which i'm not sure how the cemetery knew that the casket exploded because i'll have to ask them hmm that's i'll have to get to the bottom of that but but we absolutely, they're on the one, two, three. They're on the fourth row up. It's the top, the highest one at this mausoleum particularly. And we took the face of the mausoleum off. The cemetery did. I was present. They pulled the casket out. The base, the bottom of the casket was still intact, as were the, the walls. But the top of the casket absolutely had busted up and broken apart and, and had fallen into pieces inside the casket where the loved one was. We took the loved one out of their casket that was now broken and placed them in another casket. It really happened. We absolutely did that. It absolutely has happened. It's very interesting. Let me know in the comments below, are you the one that yelled and said, that didn't happen? Stop yelling at me. Public dissections. Talked about like, if you're a cadaver, you have like a public dissection. This is absolutely a thing. And it's weird. How does that move the needle? I mean, obviously it's education. If, see, there you go. Gray area. Welcome to the gray area. I appreciate it. Send me a heart if you have listened to last time today. Send me another heart if you've shared 
last time with a friend or someone on social media or via text, send a heart. And if you haven't, I, I, I would love it if you did, and then send a heart. Winky. By the way, have you noticed on my YouTube channel, all the new merch is available? Like, right now? Yeah. I did a thing last night where we gave away merch to a lucky individual on TikTok for purchasing merch. Anybody who purchased merch, they're entered to win a bunch of merch. So purchase some merch right here, right now. We'll do it here on, on this platform too. Purchase merch until now and 11.59 p.m. That's Central Standard Time. You get entered to win. You can buy anything. Buy a mug, buy a shirt, buy a hoodie, holy shirts and pants, and then you're entered to win. So we'll absolutely be notifying the individual who won tomorrow, but 11.59 p.m. the cutoff. So buy you some merch right now. Support it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Public dissection. Public dissections, they served as these postmortem punishments. So not like at the Ramada Inn, but the spectacle of this dissection was considered desecration and it led to clashes and highlighted societal views on the sanctity of the human body after death. Public dissection, they did it while they were still alive. So this wasn't after death. So this was the way in which you died. So it was quoted saying people who were murderers who were going to be publicly dissected, they were quoted saying and pointing to the person at the gallows, like, you know, you've got it easier than we do. So there were three people involved in a public dissection, like the head doctor, like the high up, and then it went down and the high up would just simply sit and point. And, and it got us so far as the one that got their hands dirty. And they would absolutely pull the arms and legs apart and do all kinds of wild things. Obviously, they would succumb to their, their pain. And no thank you. No thank you. That would be horrid. I feel, do you feel like they were more animal? I mean, obviously, that's a very animalistic thing to have done but do you feel that they were ruthless more so like think about the gladiators and like the roman Colosseum and watching people get eaten by lions and people were sitting there like you know just eating you know like chicken legs and stuff and watching drinking wine and i couldn't watch that how do they do that do you feel like they're more animalistic then than they are now or do you feel like we're more animalistic in a different way now let me know anyway public dissection no thanks in flight deaths (laughs) It's interesting. So airlines employ various strategies to manage in-flight deaths, balancing respect for the deceased with the comfort and safety of other passengers. The handling of such situations reflects broader societal attitudes toward death and the dead. I believe it's British Airways. So a woman and husband, the husband died and they propped his deceased body up in first class in the seat and put sunglasses on him. (laughs) I do know that every single cruise ship has a morgue. I remember when I was on Oasis of the Seas, Royal Caribbeans, I was like, they have a morgue here? They're like, yeah, I wanted to see it. They didn't let me, by the way. But, you know, you're in the middle of the ocean. Somebody dies. You're obviously not going to ruin, you're not going to ruin the vacation for 3,000 people. You'll just respectfully place them in refrigeration. This is not the same because there's not a cooler or or refrigeration on a flight, but if someone is deceased, like an elderly individual, they're not just going to, especially if it's a international flight. Now, what's the difference between someone like that person that had the accident all the way down the aisle? That was atrocious, atrocious. Kind of like the video I just did talking about crazy things to see in a basement, like the naked man with feces all over him. But anyway, you might have seen that video. But why did they turn around and divert back on account of feces? But if someone, I mean, I'm sure they tried to resuscitate. They, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, I have two things I need to dig deeper in. But that it's good to know that they handle these situations with reverence. I do know that no airline... None, no flight attendant is trained on bereavement. Passengers who are traveling due to bereavement, traveling to different state, maybe out of the country to attend a visitation and funeral for a loved one. Think about that. If they are exposed to a loved one sitting in the chair, grieving, 
there is no protocol for any of the airlines for how to handle the grieving process, the grieving of a traveler. Interesting, right? All right. Severed heads and consciousness. This has been, this one is a very interesting, interesting one. So the fascination with the consciousness of a severed head, particularly during the era of the guillotine, whoosh, reflects humanity's deep curiosity about the boundaries between life and death. Modern research on decapitated animals adds a scientific dimension to this long-standing question. So, the question is, is, do you stay alive after your head is removed? And they had done testing on animals, and animals lived absolutely after their heads were decap when they were decapitated. And some doctors stated, absolutely not, you are done. You are 1,000% deceased. Well, there was an individual whose friend operated the guillotine, and they were going to be killed. So they said to their friend, I will give you a sign if I am to still be alive. And they were said to have winked at their friend who was operating the guillotine. Like, it's a documented story. Now, you know, so is Casper, and so is Ghostbusters. I get it. Um, documented in the sense of multiple accounts. Nonetheless, there are a lot of, there's a lot of back and forth on, is this real, is this not real? And I think that it also sparks this conversation about how scientists do know where this particular irreversible death is, and they're actually working to see if they can figure out like the finality portion of like when you when you are dying because there's a dying process like there's a book called Gone from Our Sight and I'm not speaking to this very well because I I want to make sure I I want to read it but I don't have the notes in front of me but I've done a video on it and if you are able to find that these doctors and scientists and they believe that they can reverse death not forever but if someone is ill and dying and they find this this specific place, then they can reverse the death. Nonetheless, that's another one altogether. My gosh, we've got a lot of, I got a lot of research to do. This is, this is how I unwind and relax is going into the weeds. And it might sound weird. How are you able to relax? But this is, this is, this is in a weird way, not necessarily the content, but just this stuff is therapeutic for me because there's so many things and moving parts and merch stores and podcast episodes and flying to LA and doing these lives, which I love seeing, you know, it, I still have life to live. I, I still want to see my kids and play basketball and watch them play basketball and driving here and driving there and scheduling this and schedule. Anyway, that is an escape for me. So let me know in the comments below which portion you are most intrigued by because I think I did 10. And I look forward to and ask your questions because every Thursday night we go live, we answer your questions. The first one was a few, just a few that we touched, but ask your questions that you would love to have answered. And maybe just maybe not only will we answer them in an upcoming live, but maybe I'll turn it into a video series. And these video series are really fun to do because it's, it's interesting. It is interesting. Hmm. Thanks for supporting the music and streaming. I see the hearts and thanks for supporting with merch. That means a lot to me. Let me know that you got some merch. And and if you did, then you just might win all the merch. Because we're gonna pull we'll pull a rabbit out of the hat. Speaking of, okay, and then I'm done. I get to go to the Magic Castle. Not not Magic Castle like Disney. I guess it's called the Magician's Castle, Magician's Hotel, Magicians. It's a invite only. Can't wait. We're gonna have dinner, cocktail attire, and then magicians are gonna be there. OMG. All right. Your love far more than you could ever know. Thanks for letting me go into the rabbit hole. Thanks for streaming. Last time I almost said yet, but yet still available too. We have so many things to be excited about. All right. I will send you pictures. 
and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, shut up, Nathan. Shut up, Nathan.